I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight on Royce in the House's live podcast, where our subject tonight will be legendary concerts and our personal favorites. Now, with all the concerts that have been made, up tens of thousands, uh, we'd be here for two weeks trying to talk about every concert that's ever been done. But we're going to talk about the ones that were memorable to us, the ones we enjoyed the most, tell some stories about them. I've got my fantastic co-host over here, um, Michael Nolan, The Bottom Line. He's got a fantastic show. I'm going to call it the fastest growing show on YouTube I've ever seen in my life. Michael does an excellent job and he's very, very popular. Uh, very, very pleased that he was able to join us tonight. But, uh, but that was cool, you know, meeting Jason Bonham when he was just so young like that. And he was talking about how he had the best teacher in the world. Uh, I just did a video on Clat 2, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, I understand you're a fan. Too, well, yes, I am. Right? Okay, dig this. I've already pinned the comment. So you guys go over to my, uh, my channel and see this video for this I, reason I only. Terry freaking Draper of Clat 2 said thanks and he and and the biggest the biggest uh what do you call thumbs up i could have gotten from this guy wow uh, that's cool was yeah. he said i was accurate <coughs> i was accurate so i do a lot of research for my videos and to have terry draper of clat 2 by the way terry draper drummer sometimes lead vocalist that's him who starts off the song calling occupants he starts the lead vocals on that, and then Wallace Chuck comes in later, okay. right? He also co-wrote that song, as well as December Dream. You no, know, it's cool. It's cool when artists like that reach out to you. I had something similar. Right. Uh, it was right before my wife passed away, and uh, I did a video montage of pretty much our life together. Yeah. And I picked and I picked a song from Boston. Well, Fran Cosmo, the singer for the second singer for Boston, saw my video and contacted me and i go oh my god it's fran cosmo and he was thanking wow. me for using his the song that he sang you know for my for my wife's video and i went wow and he said you know keep me up to date what's going on so all during my wife's illness up to her death you know i was telling him what was going on and so it's, it's pretty cool when you have an artist reach out to you like that personally oh yeah you know it was it, it was interesting because uh, interesting i should say <laughs> um <laughs> but what i I've, I've been meaning to do that video since I started my channel, and mm. well, actually, I started the channel. If you guys, I don't know, uh, Royce, you may remember, I actually, my channel started off being a tech oriented channel. We used to do, uh, you know, tutorials on how to yes. edit uh, for right. YouTube, uh, you know, how to light for YouTube, things like that. And right. uh, I, I, that's why I just recently redid my uh, thing on the Beatles Get Back uh right, was right. because that right. was just a one-off i did mm -hmm. that you may have come you and i might have hooked up right around that time royce i think uh, i we, think we that's right around did. the time i yeah. discovered your channel and uh <laughs> right. so uh and i had such a great response i actually got a thousand views for me i was getting maybe 125 views at that time right, right? and uh <laughs> on a good video and uh so that kind of changed the whole complexion of my channel <laughs> Right. it really did that was like okay this is what i want to do you know yeah. i enjoy yeah. doing that other stuff but this stuff speaks to me you know right and 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 just doing that and i always wanted to do a, a thing but i wanted to kind of get established before i do i didn't want to come off left field because Klatu is not known especially yeah. to younger right. viewers right. uh and really not to a lot of people beyond their first album they might remember them oh yeah that's the band everybody thought was secretly the Beatles the Beatles. and they've become a curiosity item in history right. and there's so much more than that they mm -hmm. really are uh, I call them the Gilbert and Sullivan of rock because they have that whimsical humor throughout all of their music <laughs> that's pretty much like right out of a Gilbert and Sullivan play you know yeah their, their songs are so unique I mean there's one song on there Sir Rugglesby Rugglesby Oh my God! That yeah. sounds like that sounds like something like something off of Sesame Street. I'll mm -hmm. be the only man who's <laughs> ever been to hell and come back alive. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I love it. That, I love it. And well, then they go go from that to to, like, right behind. to to Mr. Manson. You know, I, I love that Mr. Manson song. I mean, that is wow. <laughs> Am I God Almighty? Remember that part? <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that sends chills down. But your the the riffs, <laughs> the guitar riffs are great. Oh, D Long. Uh, one of rock's best guitar players do you know on their endangered species album he hardly plays on it 
because the record company told them, look, we need to update your sound. So uh, Wallace Chuck was in favor and uh, he he sounds great on that album. But both uh, Terry and D are hardly even on that album. You know, uh, mm. they brought in others uh, like studio guitarists and things. And I'm going, how can you possibly? First yeah. of all, uh, Terry Draper has one of the best feels. I mean, he's very like Ringo. He has almost that trip kind of approach to his drumming. How and but they were bringing in drum machines and the latest studio drummers that were yeah. hooked into drum machines and all of that. And then D Long, what? Okay, uh, maybe bring in Hendrix to replace him on a song or two. But D Long, right. oh man, the whole band. Watch how D plays. Listen to the whole band does this. They all think symphonically, and D will play his guitar like an oboe, but it's a guitar part almost playing an oboe part but it's oh, in distortion wow. guys give them a listen i swear if you give them more than one or two listens this band was you know they were something special they really yeah. were yeah I, I have their first album it's like probably directly behind me but yeah yeah that first, that first album got me hooked and i've got all yeah. their albums i got them all yep and I, I, I just like the wow. fact that not all the songs sound the same they've all got their own have you gotten so Sology? Is that what it's called? Sology yet? I haven't gotten that one. That's got all the alternative takes. It's uh, like a double CD. You can get it from their site, but okay. uh, I want to get that one next. Yeah. I see Rachel has commented about Clatu. That's because they're Canadian. <laughs> like she, Actually, what? she was. Uh, she brought them up on today's show too. Really? And then okay. um, I think uh, Massey too was uh, had a, like a promotional copy, and he had a, an insert of. Um, when the you know the label sent it out and they had something about the Beatles, I didn't see the whole thing, but they said something about like they were kind of promoting it. You know? Well, yeah, it's not so much they were promoting it; they just weren't denying it. Uh, Roy, she talked about uh, again uh, special concerts. Uh, I, I I saw um, Alan Parsons uh, up in Santa Rosa. My own, I didn't have to leave town, man. <laughs> and, and, you know, and uh, it, wonderful. Uh, there was no Eric Wolfson. Okay. But wow. uh, the band was tight, and I got a chance. And it was such a small venue that I got a chance to go up and shake his hand and tell him, "I thank you very much." And you know what? Uh, personally, to me, I thought, you know, this guy's heard this a thousand and one times. And right. you know what? He looked me right in the eye and said, "Thank you" in such a sincere <laughs> way. I was hooked. You know, I thought he really cares. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. <laughs> but uh you know what a nice oh, guy what a nice guy and uh I i'm a big alan Parr. you know i like all right. of the beetle related bands you know i love oasis sort of kind of uh i love uh you know well you know that i i said in one of my videos i have a love hate relationship with o mm -hmm. oasis they're brilliant okay they're yeah. brilliant but they can also mm. but uh you know of course elo I mentioned mm -hmm. Clatu yeah. and uh, Badfinger. You know, everybody right. asked me in my latest video, "Why didn't you cover ba Badfinger?" Oh, Badfinger's yeah. coming, baby! Right? Oh, yeah. good, good. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I actually Great. did lights yeah. for Badfinger one time, 1991. That's right. You said that yeah. before. Yeah. And I just just saw uh, Joey Mullen with um, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Todd Rundgren. Uh, it was, oh, they, they were doing the Beatles uh, revolver, which is called 50 years ago or something. They were doing Beatles revolver album, Christopher well, Cross. Yeah, well, <laughs> Todd Rundgren, boy, I believe. The I, last I, bad boy. I think Todd Rundgren is the one that was actually uh, not managing Badfinger, but it was like his project. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you look at the, you, you, the I think Ivy? it was Todd Rundgren. It was Rod when they were the Ivies, really? Well, it may be. From what I understand, they were the Ivies. They had that single. They had the lead singer who they let go, brought on Joey, right as Paul brought them kind of into Apple. And he wrote, come and get it for him, which I love that single. But you know what? That's the, to me, out of all their top hits, that to me, I, I really liked it when they became themselves. And out of that yeah. song, I, I actually prefer the song that's on Anthology by Paul that he recorded guys in one freaking hour wow. that on and thought listen to it it is as good as the bad finger cut every bit as good 
and he recorded it by himself in one freaking hour before wow. the Beatles showed up for a recording session. I believe Badfinger was only the was the second uh, al- second band to, to be signed to Apple. Well, if you're talking about a personal concert that I've actually gone to, besides Zeppelin, would have to be the Rolling Stones in uh, was it '91 or '92 for their Steel Wills tour concert. Yeah, and uh, it was he- here in Dallas. It was held in the Cotton Bowl. You know, what was a capacity of about eighty thousand people. Right, I, and they knew there was going to be such a de- demand for the tickets that you had to go down like two weeks before the, the tickets put on sale and get, get a yeah. wristband put on. And each wristband was numbered. They got the number and they put it in a big pot. Wow. Well, two, two weeks later, you go down to the ticket, this way before the internet. So you had to go down to the ticket agency, the headquarters, and there must have been 10,000 people at the ticket headquarters. And they drew the number, it was my wristband. And I was <laughs> number, <laughs> number one in line. And I, so, so I got it six- never happened to me. I got six front row center tickets in the Cotton Bowl for the Stones. I mean, best concert ever. But I tell you what, I have much more respect for people that sit on the front row when they got flat, <laughs> flash pots going off. Those yeah. things are hot, oh, even wow. on the front yeah. row. Right. But that that was one of the one of the dream concerts, you know, being on front row. I mean, I was so close, I could see Mick Jagger sweating. To McCartney, uh, uh, 76 at the Cow Palace Wings Over America Tour, and uh, festival seating and uh fortune favors the brave i mean i was right there seven feet wow. away from him as he, wow. as he played yesterday you know uh amazing <laughs> my most I, treasured <laughs> treasured moment i'm envious because well, at that time when that concert was going when that concert tour was going on in 76 i was so stationed overseas in guam and i'm a mccartney fan and i'm thinking oh my god if i could be back in the state to see mccartney it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't until 1990 i think i finally saw him in 1990 uh at Texas Stadium. I saw him on that tour. He was in Berkeley uh, that time, and they set new um, uh, sound levels. Uh, everybody complained. They tried to get the concert shut down. But here's the difference. I paid uh, uh, probably, you know, 20, 20 bucks to see him the first time, Wings. And this time it was like 150. This time he was this small, and you watched him on the large screen TVs. Yeah. And I said, never again. And so wow. that's why, uh, you know, these rafter nosebleed ticket things, oh, uh, you. you know, you guys, I don't care who it is. I am not going to pay $250 no. to watch a damn television. No. You know, you yeah. know that's it's just not going to happen for me anymore. Right. That's something right. I used to always wonder about when I was a kid, you know, for my military service and all that. You know, I went to concerts all the time. But no matter how hard I tried, I always end up in the balcony. Always into the balcony. I go, how do those people get those tickets down yeah. there? It used to drive me crazy. You know, and over the years, I found out how a lot of those tickets are sold to corporations and, you know, and they, they, yeah. they, they reserve a bunch to set aside. But, but I never could get floor tickets. They're calling it dynamic pricing. This is what Ticketmaster calls it. Dynamic pricing oh, dynamic based pricing on me. In other words, a ticket that'll sell that Charlie buys at 8 o'clock for 100 bucks. And his wife goes in at an hour later and they sell it to her for $500 because right. demand went up. All right. Yep. And they say, and then, and then they claim this is the way they, they combat scalping guys. Do you guys recall what a scalper is? Oh they yeah. They use dynamic. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they use dynamic <laughs> pricing, right? Am I right or what? Well, they're yeah. scalping. Yeah. Ticket they, master. You are. It's, it's professional scalping. Professional yeah, they, scalping. Yeah. They out- I, I, the a, get I want to do a quick shout out. We have Rachel's ghost in the chat. I invited hey, her Rachel. Off. She just wants to hang in the chat tonight. And everybody say hi to Rachel. I want to I want to let everybody know that doesn't oh. already know that Rachel's ghost, she has a fantastic show, just like Zep Pearl and Michael Nolan and Dan McNew. Uh, Rachel's got a great show. She's got a big following. And uh, I've had a lot of fun there in the chat. And uh, I've had a lot of fun having her on the show a few times as well. Zep Pearl, tell us about one of your favorite bigger venues. Um, yeah, there's so many. But I guess, you know, I have to go with the first time that Page and Plant toured when okay. they came through. That was a big deal for me. Uh, also kind of half with that when Robert Plant did his first solo tour oh, yeah. uh, he, okay. uh, he, in 83. So, you know, like I said, I just missed that one. Right. When you guys were talking about Woodstock, I was about two years old. So <laughs> I missed all the good stuff of the 70s. <laughs>